folks, thanks for clicking on my uh, video and checking out my new YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing a suite of products that I own and I have put to the test over the last couple years from Dakota 283. Uh, kind of let you know my take on, um, you know, are they a worthwhile company to get stuff from? And more importantly, is it worth all the money? All right, so let's get the big stuff out of the way first. I've got two Dakota 283. Um, G3 frame door kennels. Both of them are a size large, and for both of them, I have a Mud River uh, insulated cover for them. Dakota 283's G3 frame door kennel features what they say is a roto molded military grade plastic body. Not sure exactly what that means, but it does seem pretty durable and heavy. If you were to get the large or extra large size kennels, you'll end up with 40 total ventilation holes, 20 per side with one in the rear as a clean out hole. They're also molded with a nice carry handle on top that helps to deal with the weight getting it in and out of a truck. The latches on the door assembly are a pretty simple keyed paddle latch that you can lock obviously. And then when you look inside, yeah, I mean, you can tell it's just a nice big open spacious kennel. My biggest issue with the door assembly has been the latches. They're simply not weatherproof as they're advertised to be. However, a couple of shots of white lithium grease throughout the season keeps the squeaking down and ensures that they still function smoothly. What if you're not in the mood to spend $500 on a kennel, right? I mean, there are other competitors out there. This is a rough, tough kennel. I think this is a medium size um, sitting beside the Dakota just to kind of show some differences and similarities. Um, obviously, breathability. There's lots of holes in this one for ventilation. Um, it is a lighter weight kennel, that's for sure. Easier to pick up, though there's no handle, so kind of bulky. Um, a benefit here is that the latch assembly units are enclosed. I've never opened these, so I don't know if the weatherproofing or whatever it has works, but you know, they don't seem to squeak as much as, as the Dakota does without maintenance. And you have the benefit of opening both sides of the door, depending on where it sits in your truck bed. Now, by far the most common question I was asked about Dakota versus Rough Tough kennels was stackability. Can you stack them? Dakota sells a stacking kit, which I don't have. Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, what they mean by that. There are recesses here in the top that looks like it would hold the feet of a bottom kennel, but the kennels have no feet. I'm not sure if it's just a side connecting kit or a vertical connecting kit. But what I'm pretty sure of is there's no way you could stack, especially the size larges, in a honeycomb fashion like you can a rough tough kennel, which would allow you to fit three dogs under, you know, a single truck shell in the back of a truck bed. Now here I've put on the Mud River kennel cover. It's a standard Mud River cover, nothing fancy about it. I mean, they're kind of fancy, right? You got pockets, uh, flip pockets, zipper pockets, bungee pockets for dummies and whatever. Um, this kind of neoprene material on the bottom so it doesn't slide around a bunch keeps it latched on the front your velcro keepers for the door that comes down and zip shut fits great one problem that i'll show you on the top though that i guess it's not a problem but you know when you pay 200 dollars for a kennel cover you kind of want it to stay looking sort of nice you can see here a distinct contrast in color that's occurred due to fading uh, from the sun on the front of the kennel versus the top of the kennel. This didn't happen over two years. This happened after the first season. Now, does it get a bazillion degrees here in Utah during the summer? Yeah, it does. But these covers aren't on during the summer. Dimensions and portability are certainly a factor for any kennel. Um, so I'll show you real quick how well they fit in the back of my 01 Dodge Ram 2500 standard bed. The depth of the bed certainly isn't a problem, even though I have a full-size uh, low-profile toolbox in the back. Um, the main thing that most people are concerned about, right, is wheel well clearance. Well, as you can see right here, the kennels fit side by side just fine. Um, even one of them has a mud river cover on, and when I have both of them with the mud river cover on, no problems. Wheel well clearance on a standard size six-foot bed seems to be perfect. So overall, as far as the way these kennels fit in the back of my truck, I'm totally satisfied with it. All right, well, another important fit factor is obviously your dog size. Um, I've got my setter in here, Angus. He's about, oh, 40, 42 pounds right now. Uh, he's 18 months old, so he's height-wise about as big as he's going to get. And, I mean, he's got plenty of room in there to turn around and fit in the kennel. We'll let you watch him walk out and walk back in. Here. 
you sit. Sit, bud. There you go. So size-wise, you can see, you know, he no problem getting in and out. He's not particularly cramped. Let's see. Go kennel. There you go. I consider him a large size dog. I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to put him in a medium on a really long road trip. Um, this would certainly be overkill for something like a Brittany. Um, the medium, I'm sure, would be just fine. But, you know, you'll have to read the dimensions, I guess, and come up with a size to weight to height ratio that fits with you and your dog. This is a really anecdotal, um, you know, example. But I had to show you something, right? Well, I think that'll do it for the kennel review. I don't really know much else to say. Whether or not this is worth 500 bucks to you at full retail, that's up to you. But consider this, in order to get this kennel with a mud river cover, with no discount codes or anything, you're at pretty much 700 bucks. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people who have seen the Gunner kennels and made comments about, I would never pay that much for a kennel. But if you wanna outfit one of these, you're not very far off. And you'd have to really come to the conclusion that, hey, you know, this is better than a gunner or I'm getting more than this for the price because I'm also getting the cover compared to a gunner, something like that. Or that this really isn't worth it, that for 700 bucks, I could get two rough tufts with the Mud River covers and be just fine. And quite frankly, you probably would. The kennel is kind of like a good scope. It's kind of like a good saddle. A lot of people focus on the horse. They don't realize that the horse is going to die eventually that you're gonna be sitting on the horse, but what you're sitting on on the horse is the saddle. You don't wanna get a $10,000 horse and a $100 saddle. You don't wanna get a $1,000 rifle and a $50 scope, right? You're not gonna be able to use it to the full purpose that it's meant to be used. So, I mean, a kennel is gonna outlast all of our dogs. Some of them, if they keep in good you know, shape and you take care of them, might outlast us. Um, I don't know how to tell you whether or not you should make that decision. If I could go back in time, would I still get the Dakotas? Uh, no, I don't think I would. I think I would get Mud Rivers covers on Rough Tough Kennels. Um, but I have them and I, I bit that bullet. And I'm not saying no because there's anything wrong with them. It is strictly, uh, I don't know. I haven't experienced a wreck or a big incident yet that's caused me to look and be like, oh man, if I hadn't had this kennel, I would have lost my dog. Um, so anyway, balls in your court, uh, you know, to make that decision. We're gonna move on now to some of their other accessories that I'm gonna review for you. Okay, so first we'll focus real quick on the Diamond Dash. Um, I wanna start off by saying that I really, really wanted to like this thing. I mean, when I first saw that they had this for sale, I was like, this is the best idea I have ever seen. Um, you know, all in one, it, it would it would last me easily an all day hunt. I've actually there's a couple of times, two days, you know, you keep the water full, two days worth of food easily in here. Um, but there are some big downsides to this system. Plastic, it, it's the same material as the kennels, I believe, but if you leave it around every single, and I've had three of these, by the way, this is this is the third one. Um, I, I'm not just giving you my review on one of these. Um, every one of them, the dogs, for some reason, there's something appealing about chewing on these darn corners. So they get chewed up. They haven't punctured it, but, you know, it's it's obviously, I guess, an annoyance. The big problem with these things, though, is they are not two-piece. You cannot get a thorough cleaning on these things at the end of the season, or obviously if you're hunting in hotter weather where bacteria and stuff is a factor, throughout the season dogs get in here they drink water the nice thing about them is when you lift them up the water will just go back in into the reservoir on the inside you can plug it and save what's not used but all that bacteria filled saliva gets back up in there and i don't know what else it is but these things grow bacteria and mold on the inside like crazy also in the off season what do you think would fit in that hole pretty easily yeah mice in the off season, every single time, you know, I try to deal with rodent problems, keep them out of the dog shed, you know, do my best. Every time I come to flush one of these things out, there's mouse crap that comes out. I have bleached them. I have done dishwater. I have done all that stuff. And still, it will get to a point where the dog will simply refuse to drink out of it. Pause right there. I just want to point out that if this was a two-piece system, the cleaning would be so much easier. 
so much more sanitary and I think they would last longer because the dogs would actually want to drink out of them. Another huge flaw in it and I don't know why. I don't know if it's, it's the adhesive, if it's part of the molding process, but every single Dine and Dash that I've had, water has started to seep through and get into the food reservoir. So I used to think it was condensation until I filled one of them up with water one time. I think it was an orange one. And I was able to watch water just coming through like various just just molded cracks that had formed in there in, in the molding. And so, I mean, that completely ruins the food, especially if you're on a two or three day hunt, you don't know it's wet and you just let it sit there, it'll mold. It's a horrible, horrible thing that happens. And so this thing has basically become, um, you have to use it as a water only or a food only. I can totally recommend the idea. I cannot recommend the product itself because of that. There's too many issues. I do want to point something else out and I don't know any of the people at the company. I'm not trying to dog on the company, but when I first got this one, when I first got this one, again, they roll to mold these things and then they go and drill them out, you know, to, to drill out the areas where the water and the food goes and they leave the shavings in them. They do the same thing with the kennels. I got the kennels, they were full of shavings. I got these, they were full of shavings. With the kennels, it's not a big deal. With these, it is kind of a big deal. I start flushing water out and some pretty significant size shavings were just getting into the, into the water and the food area. And I actually emailed the company and I don't know if it was a customer service representative or whoever was emailing me back and he was kind of debating with me and telling me that it's perfectly okay for my dog to ingest plastic, that the shavings are not that big and it shouldn't be a problem. Well, some of the shavings were kind of big. So I, I'm, I'm not trying to say one thing or the other about how defensive they are with their products, but they, he, I got the distinct feeling they did not want to hear that I liked the design, but that the execution and specifically that the shavings and stuff still being left inside was, was not good. It wasn't something that I think they should have done. Okay, next up is the Dash 3.5, and this is the newest one that I have. Um, it's pretty simple, should be pretty dumb dumb proof. It's water, nothing but water. You got a plug on the top to fill it. You got a plug on the front to let the water out. You can see right there, the water just kind of bubbles out. And then there's a drain plug on the bottom. One thing I've noticed with it is with the Dine and Dash, you can just lift this handle up and the water will go back up in there. With this, it hardly goes back up in there. And I've even tried pulling this plug to see if it's a pressure issue. It doesn't make a difference. The water still just kind of sits there. So you're kind of losing any water that they don't drink. Uh, so you just kind of have to re-plug it like that when it's wet, lift it up, tilt it back, dump the excess water, and you're good to go. Um, that could be a good thing, like I said, because of the bacteria problems I've had and the mold problems I've had with this one. I am anticipating the same problems with this, but minus the added mold and, and bacteria from the food, because food is not an issue. I'm gonna do my best with this thing to you know, keep it clean, Keep it flushed out. Um, hopefully, it will give me less problems because there's, there's, like I said, there's less bacteria potential in there. Well, there you have it, guys. That's kind of my complete take on the Dakota 283 products that I own. Um, again, I haven't just bought these. I have had these products for the last two hunting seasons. They've seen a lot of wear and tear, minus the Dine and Dash. They've experienced a lot of trips and stuff like that. Do I think that they're a worthwhile company to get stuff from? It's interesting. I think the parent company forum is called Good Ideas, and I think the company is full of good ideas. Um, I think the execution could be a lot better, a lot more professional, and then the price point on these kennels, you know, that's a debate you have to have with you, your, your spouse, and your banker. So I'm gonna keep watching their products that come out. I'm gonna keep seeing what they do. Um, if they choose to improve on any of these things, if they choose to accept any customer feedback or not, and uh, obviously, you know, I'll keep you guys updated on any other things I try. Appreciate you for checking out my YouTube channel here in this first video. And hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. And uh, I'll try to crank a few more out on some other products that I have. So thanks again.